I have the pleasure and privilege of directing New Jersey Health Initiative, which is a statewide grant making program with the Robert Johnson Foundation. And hopefully, all of you know that Robert Johnson Foundation is the largest foundation here in the great state of New Jersey. Uh, it's all about health. A couple years ago, I had a really ambitious idea to say, we're going to think about health differently. Instead of thinking about patients and providers, health care systems, we're going to think about what happens when we work, they live alone around health. All right? And that's a different conversation. And to have a conversation and really think about health in a different way, we really had to know we had to engage different voices in the right? So in our grant making, we started funding cross sector coalitions across the state to really come around the same table and really think about their community. So places like Camden, Trenton, Bridgeton, Salem, bless you, Asbury Park, um, Perth Amboy, they all came around the same table and they said, this is what our community needs, right? So it's a bottom-up kind of idea and thinking about upstream, right? So what happens before we get sick? How do we start to address those kinds of things? In our parks and playgrounds, in our transportation, in our schools, um, all these kinds of things. What we realized, though, as we started from these coalitions, we're missing a really important voice, and that's the voice of youth. In a lot of our communities, especially our most vulnerable communities, youth represent up to 40% of the population. Up to 40% of the population, let that sink in, are under the age of 18. That is child death, okay? And that means that there's a lot going on with youth in our communities, right? And we really need to understand that. It also means we really have to think about how do we invest in human capital when it's going to make our community healthier. And we know that if we start to think about these youth not as a problem to be managed, but a resource to be kind of to be kind of worked with and utilized, if we invest right in five, 10, 15 years, these youth who are going to, a lot of them are going to stay in the community are going to be great mayors, great community leaders, great school board people. But we have to make investments early. Because a lot of those youth, especially those that are not the, um, the highest achieving, are going to be in that community, in places like Camden and Trenton and Newark and Patterson in 5, 10, 15 years. They're going to live there. So let's make investments now. So what we did, we came up with a grant making idea, Next Generation Community Leaders Program. We said to youth serving organizations to apply for this money. You have to, one, show us you know how to work with youth. Show us you have coaches and administrative capacity there to do that. Show us how you're going to compensate me, right? Because we said you can't just kind of have them come in. Their time is valuable. If we're saying they're important, then their time is valuable, right? So don't tell us how you're going to give them gift cards. Tell us how you're going to compensate them at least in wage for their time. Um, and how are you going to create a summer employment project for them that's going to be their summer employment in 2018? So we got 11 um, grants that we funded across the state. And we brought in a great technical assistance provider. She's standing to my left right now, and I'm going to turn it over to her. Okay, so all that stuff sounds well and good. All that theory, all that philanthropy stuff. But how do you then do the work in New Jersey? How do we take all these big ideas about youth engagement and actually execute a project and get a team together? Um, and we believe it's really important. We believe it's really important because youth work is messy. But guess what? So is democracy. And if we care about our democracy in New Jersey, which we should, then we need to engage youth because it's just like the same process we need to go through to engage citizens the right way, in a really authentic way, in a really way, a way that matters and makes people feel like their voice matters. So, we created kind of an arc of the year. So the project started big year. The project started last summer where we had a coaches retreat training session for all the coaches. So who are the coaches? In each of the 11 towns, a grantee hired, usually two coaches, people from the community, to kind of shepherd this entire project from beginning to end. So the coaches which all came together in a big meeting where we did a training and we told them about the arc of the project. And these three pillars are really important in the time arc of this entire year project, which the first cohort is happening this summer. So this first July project will be the first time these youth in these 11 cities will have done this health project. So the first piece of it is team building. Team building is super, super important and something that's very overlooked. It's important in the research and it's important in the day to day. You can see these teams develop. So team building is really important because it helps youth feel known. It helps them feel like they have people counting on them. If you've been part of a sports team or a team at work, you're much more likely to show up because you know the other folks that you care about, that you've gone through stuff with, care about you and you're accountable to them interpersonally. And that piece is really, really important. Youth engagement doesn't just happen if you drop a bunch of random youth into a room and throw a mayor in there and call it youth engagement. That's not youth engagement. Building these networks is just as much part of youth engagement as any other piece of work. We started off with a weekend at Camp Rock 
which is a YMCA camp in the Pine Barrens where there's water and a lake and a river and canoeing and high ropes course and all these like really intense team building activities. So it was sort of this team building ethos in a box with one really intense weekend. And that gave them all a common denominator from which they could build moving forward. Because the stuff's going to be challenging as they grow, right? They're going to try to, they're going to go through a lot of the course of the year together. You want them to have a grounding and shared experience. The second thing is really emphasizing a connection with the community. Much like what Bob was saying about not wanting folks to parachute in and be done things to them, needs to be a collaborative effort. And the youth, they're only going to be doing this a year. They have to be building on existing infrastructure. They have to be connecting with elected officials, nonprofit <coughs> leaders, university leaders in their cities, so that beyond their time here, it will be sustained. And they'll be building from something that already exists. One of the challenges we found with this community partnership stuff was that community leaders aren't necessarily well suited automatically to dealing with you. And you can imagine why, right? They're not necessarily comfortable with the idea that instead of the old script, which we've seen a thousand times, which is I'm the adult, you're the youth, you're going to sit here and listen, and you're going to take notes eagerly because I'm so brilliant. You have to flip the script, right? You have to flip the script a little bit, and you have to be comfortable with that, and you have to be okay with things. You have to keep it online, you have to keep guardrails in, but you have to be okay with that multi-directional conversation with a true partnership. And building down, breaking down those that, like, framework in people's minds is really hard. Right, because that, that's how they develop initiative, right? We know from the research, that's how you develop initiative. One, it has, they have to have agency, they have to have voice. Two, they have to have the arc of time, right? A year is a good amount of time. And three, it has to result in them doing some product or performance at the back end. That's their summer employment project. But that's, again, hard. As you pointed out, everyone says we want to engage you. Everyone says we want community voice. Nobody really does that really well because it's hard to do, right? I mean, it's when we say we want to engage um, the community and we have meetings at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and we don't have child care and we have all these other issues, we're not really trying to engage the community. And same thing with youth. We say we want to engage you, but it's difficult. Like Sue said, and Sue was going to point it out. It's hard to work with them. It's hard to keep them at the table, get them at the table, and engage them in an authentic way where they come in as partners. And that's what we need to do. We need to have them come in as partners. Yeah, and it's about power and control and all these really big picture issues that then echo into our democracy as well. So, finally, so you've built your team, you've connected to the community, you've collaborated on what a vision for this project can be. You have some sense it taps into things that already exist. Your last step in this, which is all the teams right now are doing this work right now, is to plan and execute a sustainable project. And what are the criteria of a sustainable good youth project for the month of July? Well, number one, it has to utilize the, the talents of youth. So we see youth as actual assets. Imagine that, in a world where we see youth as like all the problems and the source of all ills, right, kids today, we see youth as an actual asset who understand and know their communities, who have energy and idealism and all those great things. So the good, a good project taps into all of that, that youth have naturally. And a good project also uses the time really well. So this is, these are teams that are ranged from eight kids, eight youth, to 20 youth. And they work full time the entire month of July. So that's a lot of man hours. So this project has to have enough meat on its bones, enough there there, to keep kids occupied and on task an entire summer. So that, those two pieces are kind of the big questions we were asking. Um, is it measurable? Can you measure outcomes? Does it, you know, really create a lasting impact? Those are all good questions.